The Thunderbird is ingrained in North American Indian legend, said to bring thunder with one mighty flap of its wings and lightning within the blink of an eye. Modern reports of the Thunderbird come from various places in North America, and a large number of these sightings take place in the central states and as far as North Pennsylvania. Mark A. Hall, a leading investigator of the Thunderbird, gives the following descript of the creature based upon numerous eyewitness testimonials. He says, the bird is distinguished by its size and lifting capabilities exceeding those of any known bird living today anywhere in the world. A wingspan that estimates are necessarily all but guesswork, but observers sometimes have had the benefit of a measurable object for comparison or the benefit of time to observe a resting bird. The results most often provide sizes of 15 to 20 feet in length. The bird at rest or on the ground appears to be 4 to 8 feet tall. Typically, the coloring of the birds overall is dark. If eyewitness accounts of the creature's wingspan are correct, a bird with a 15-foot wingspan would be the largest known in the world today. Currently, the wandering albatross, boasting a 12-foot wingspan, is credited as having the largest wingspan of, Ivy, of, excuse me, of any living bird today. The Andean condor and the California condor come in a close second in wingspan size, measuring from 10.5 to 10 feet respectively. Some researchers believe that Thunderbird sightings are nothing more than a mistaken identity of the birds listed above. However, take into consideration that the Thunderbird is reportedly capable of lifting a deer or a person from the ground. Current predatory birds are not equipped with grasping feet that are strong enough to hold such a weight. Instead, they live primarily as carry-on eaters and only seldom become predatory, usually only preying on smaller animals. One of the most controversial eyewitnesses reports of the Thunderbird's ability to lift a human off the ground comes from Lawndale, Illinois. This happened back on July 25th in 1977. Around 9 p.m., a group of three boys were playing in a friend's backyard when they looked up to see two large birds soaring above. As the birds came closer, they became aggressive and started attacking the boys, two of which managed to escape. However, the third boy, Marlon Lowe, did not. One of the birds clamped on to Marlon's shoulders with its claws and proceeded to lift the young boy from the ground for an estimated distance of about 30 yards. The young boy's cries for help attracted all the attention of the nearby neighbors who rushed to his aid. Combined with their help and the boy beating the bird as hard as he could, Marlon was finally released. Although viewed by some as a tale's tale, the description given by witnesses of the attacking birds describe a large blackbird with a white ring around its neck and a wingspan of about 10 feet in length. Traits that match the Andean condor almost exactly. The other question remains, what is the Thunderbird? There have been many different theories as to the identity of the Thunderbird itself, such as the California or Andean condor. Some believe that the Thunderbird is merely a case of misidentification and that it is not a new species at all, but a mistaken California or Andean condor. This theory would place these birds well out of their known range, and while possible, it's not very likely at all. The other one would be the Washington Eagle. There are a few researchers that believe that the Thunderbird is actually a Washington Eagle. This large predatory bird has a wingspan of over 10 feet in length, and although this animal reportedly went extinct as late as the, se as late as the 1700s, a small population of them could still be soaring around in the skies today, and that would give credit to this theory even more. Another one would be teratorns. Teratorns are large predatory birds that are extinct now, but existed a very long time ago. They would have major wingspans of up to 25 late in length, and although they're extinct, their general presumed appearance is that of a giant condor-like species, similar in appearance to what would be the Thunderbird. There is also others that say it could be a pterodactyl that witnesses are describing, although the Thunderbird is supposedly looks nothing like a pterodactyl, but there are some research that still believe they are the cause for some of these reports. Uh, another one would be a New Zealand species. There is fossil evidence that tells us that two species of gigantic eagle once lived in New Zealand. Scientists estimate the wingspan of these birds to be about 10 feet, however, believe that both species died out about um, a 
1100 or so years ago, the native New Zealanders have legends of two large eagles which sometimes prey upon humans. These legends would suggest that the creature may still be alive today. Uh, another guess is that it could be an entirely new species. Could the Thunderbird be an entirely new species of avian which has soared the skies of North America under the radar of modern science? It is unlikely that an entirely new species of giant bird lives in North America today. However, it is not out of the question. The most recent discovery of a large avion was the Philippine monkey-eating eagle in 1896, and that was in a remote location. Regardless of what the Thunderbird might be, something large soars the skies of North America, and it is only a matter of time before its true identity is revealed to the world. With misinformation and misidentification abounding, coupled with a lack of support in searching for these birds, it is no wonder that these creatures have evaded discovery like so many others around the world. The evidence thus far for the existence of a large predatory bird in North America is based on historical and modern sightings and legends with no physical evidence. There is, however, two images of the Thunderbird, or at least a large bird in general. The first was taken the same year as the attack of the Marlin Low and in the same state. On July 30, 1977, John Huffer, an ex-marine and photographer, took a 100-foot roll of color film of two large birds taking off from a tree in an inlet of Lake Shelbyville. Thought by many to be a turkey vulture, it remains fairly unknown evidence of a possible mystery animal. To date, little, if any, evaluation of the film has been done. The Discovery Channel and their program, Into the Unknown, gave the film some mention but dismissed it fairly quickly as a vulture. The other photographic image of a Thunderbird is more of a mystery and may not actually exist at all. The image is known as the Thunderbird photograph and was supposedly taken at the end of the 19th century in Texas. The image is said to depict six western clothed adult men standing arm's length from each other in front of a barn where a large bird, where a large bird is nailed to the wall. Many have claimed to have seen or held the infamous image, including the late Ivan T. Sanderson, who reported had acquired a photocopy of the image in 1966, the same year in which Sanderson gave the image, later lost, to a couple of men from Pennsylvania who were searching for the Thunderbird. The image has yet to service and may well not exist at all. The image was reported to have been published in the 19... Or excuse me, the 1886 in the Tombstone, Arizona epitaph. However, this was somewhat dubiously reported in a 1963 article by Jack Pearl called The Monster Bird That Carries Off Human Beings in Saga Magazine. Searches of the Tombstone epitaph have come up empty, aside from the article from April 26, 1890, of a 16-foot bird found in the desert by a couple of ranchers, so the mystery of the Thunderbird photo is no closer to being solved than it was nearly 40 years ago during its first mention. Hey guys, thank you for watching my video. If you like the content you saw, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment, and I will be adding videos uh, every day, if not every other day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.